Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing good. My name is Alok Kumar and today we are going to discuss about the Kubernetes troubleshooting. This is the day one of the troubleshooting session. Let's dig into why these activities matter. We are going to explore some examples and discuss the steps to handle the specific error. We need to understand why troubleshooting knowledge skills is essential. So first step is to identifying and resolving issues. So troubleshooting helps us in identifying and the resolving issues in any complex system like Kubernetes problem are bound to occur. Troubleshooting skills enable you to identify the root cause of the issues efficiently and apply the appropriate fixes, minimizing the downtime and ensuring the smooth operations of your applications. So this is the first step. Okay, why this is important, why we are doing the troubleshooting. The second one is maintaining the system health. Regular troubleshooting helps maintain the health and stability of your Kubernetes cluster by proactively addressing issues as they arise. You can prevent small problems from escalating into the larger one that can impact performance and availability. Next one is optimizing performance. Troubleshooting allow you to identify performance bottlenecks and efficiency within your Kubernetes environment. By addressing these issues, you can optimize your resource utilizations, improve response time, as well as enhance the overall performance of your applications. Next one is ensuring the reliability. Kubernetes is often used to deploy mission critical applications that requires high availability and reliability. Troubleshooting knowledge help you quickly diagnose and resolve the issues that could otherwise lead to service disruptions or failure, ensuring that your applications remain accessible and reliable. And also learning and improvement. When we troubleshoot, we keep on learning and improving or fixing our mistakes, we improve the system. So engaging in troubleshooting activities provides valuable learning opportunity. Each problem encountered presents a chance to deepen in your understanding of Kubernetes architecture, networking, resource management, and other related concepts. So over time, your, this knowledge contributes to your expertise and enable you to tackle increasing complex challenges. It, it's also required for cost saving. Timely troubleshootings can lead to cost saving by preventing unnecessary downtime or performance degrading. By promptly resolving the issues, you can avoid potential revenue loss associated with the service disruptions or the need for emergency fixes. It will also require for the enhancing of the securities. Troubleshooting involves identifying the vulnerability and the security risk within your Kubernetes environment. By addressing these issues promptly, you can strengthen your system security posture and mitigate the risk of data breaches or any types of unauthorization accesses. So troubleshooting knowledge is crucial for maintaining the health you can say the performance, reliability, and the security of the Kubernetes deployment. It empowers you to efficiently address issues as they arise, optimize the system performance, and ensure the seamless operations of your applications. So here are some of the tips how you can do the troubleshooting part. Okay, so you can check for the Kubernetes component Okay, this is the first step. You can check the health of the Kubernetes component. You can ensure that all the Kubernetes component, whatever it is, API server, controller manager, scheduler, kubelet, etc., whatever it is, are running without any error. They are up and running. You can use the command like kubectl get pod in all the namespaces to check the status of the pod in each of the namespaces. You can inspect the logs. Kubernetes component and applications running on the Kubernetes usually generate the logs. You already know that. That can provide the valuable information about what went wrong 
एंड वैन यूज कमांड लाइक क्यूब सी टी एल लॉक्स विद पॉड नेम टू व्यू द लॉक्स ऑफ ए स्पेसिफिक पॉड रिसोर्सेज यूजेज ओके हाउ द रिसोर्सेज डैट यू डिप्लॉयड इज यूजेज यूर सिस्टम चेक द रिसोर्सेज यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द नोट्स एंड द पॉड यूज द कमांड्स लाइक क्यूब कटल टॉप नोट एंड क्यूब कटल टॉप पॉड टू मॉनिटर द सी पी यू एंड द मेमोरी यूजेज insufficiently resource can lead to performance issues networking kubernetes networking can sometimes be source of issues so networking play a very crucial role when you encounter any problem ensure that the networking plugins all are in place and configured correctly check network policies service networking and dns resolutions like a stuff health check implement and regularly use the health check liveliness readiness props as well for your applications these props can help kubernetes determine whether a container is healthy and ready to serve the traffic cluster configurations review the cluster configurations including api server flag kubelet configurations and network settings incorrect configurations can cause various issues always check the events use cube ctl get event to check for any recent events related to your pod or node or other kubernetes resources events often provide useful informations about what's happening in the cluster version compatibility ensure that all kubernetes components and applications are compatible with each other mismatched version can lead to unexpected behavior and errors sometimes we, it's very hard to identify that after doing the troubleshootings but when you come across you find that some mismatch of the versions is leading for this unexpected behaviors community resources community resources leverage the community resources such as forms github issues kubernetes slack channels many kubernetes users have likely encountered the similar issues so you can google it you can provide your insights and solution as well to that particular forum refers to the official documentations of the kubernetes and the best practices guide for troubleshooting tips common issues and the recommended solutions so one thing is important while doing the kubernetes issues can sometimes be complex and requiring a deep understanding of the kubernetes architecture and underlying technology so now we are going to look into one error and what are the steps we are going to follow to troubleshoot it and what is the steps we need to execute to find the cause of the problem okay. so now this is the error that we are facing pod stuck in pending state you deployed a pod but the status of pod is in the pending state and we face this types of problem several times okay after deploying the pod the pod is currently in the pending state okay so when a kubernetes pod is stuck in the pending state it means that the kubernetes scheduler has not been able to schedule the pod to run on any of the node in the cluster so there might be several possible reason for this and troubleshooting steps typically involve checking the various component of the kubernetes cluster to identify and the resolve the issues so troubleshooting steps that we are going to follow what we are going to do the first steps we will check for the node okay so this is the first step okay so we ensure that the node in your cluster are in the healthy state and are ready to accept the new pods you can check the node status you already know that using the following command cube ctl get nodes okay so you will get the status of each of the node the second step will be inspect the pod 
okay so you can get more details about the pods that is stuck in the pending state so you can describe that particular pod so you have to inspect the command will be kubectl described dscribe here you have to write the pod or po as a short code and the name of the pod pod name okay you can check the resource request as well ensure that the pod resource request the cpu or memory are not exceeding the available resources or any node you can inspect the node sorry the pod resources request by examining its yaml definitions file okay you can check the event as well so third one is check resources okay and fourth one is uh, check for the events check events you can look for any events related to the pod or its associated resource such as uh, persistence volume for as an example that mat provides the clue about why the pod is stuck okay then you can use the command like cube ctl get events you can check for the pv as well which i mentioned check pv persistence volume if the pod uses the persistence volume then ensure that the request volumes are available and not in a conflicting state you can check for the network also network okay ensure that there is no network issues preventing the communications between the nodes in the cluster check if pods networking configured configurations is correct you can also check for the taint and tolerations okay so taint the seventh point will be taint and tolerations okay if you your cluster is configured with node taint or pod tolerations though so in, the, in that case you can make sure that they are configured correctly and not preventing the pod from being scheduled on any node you can check for the pod security policies also pod policies if your if your cluster is using the pod uh, security uh, policies then you have to ensure that the pod security context and policies allowed it to be scheduled okay and in this way you can check for the resource quota also and its limit ensure that the pods uh, name space have the sufficient uh, quota available okay resource quota uh, and uh, for the availability uh, quota available for the scheduling of the new pod you can check uh, for the cube uh, scheduler log as, as well this is very important okay okay inspect the log of the cube scheduler component to see if there is any error or warning related to scheduling the pods you can check uh, as a last step as the cube ctl sorry kubelet logs uh, just inspect the logs of the kubelet uh, on the node where the pod is supposed to be scheduled to see if there is any error or any issues preventing it from the running uh, if it um, any of the steps uh, that we mentioned not uh, work then you can restart the cube scheduler okay and the kubelet Sometimes uh, I also face this problem that sometimes restarting the cube scheduler and kubelet services can resolve such types of issues. So if you like my video 
on this topic please subscribe to my channel if you didn't subscribe it share it with your friends because uh, i am starting this playlist as uh, kubernetes troubleshooting and keep on uh, posting the videos on each of the error so today we only see one error in next video we will see more than two error or three error okay in each of the sessions so you can also comment that you how you tackle these types of problems you definitely faced uh, these types of problem when the pod status is in the pending estate and how you can how you troubleshoot and fix this issue you can uh, paste the in the comment sections this will uh, definitely help uh, the communities to understand what other scenario we have to for the troubleshooting what we missed in this particular video to be considered okay so thank you for watching this video have a nice day